Readers and listeners' discretion is advised. The following story discusses contents of loss, grief, and mental health. Thank you. One spring afternoon, I was met with a beautiful breeze when I opened the window to Medium's bedroom. I embraced it as I began to slowly walk back to the center of the empty space that once was engulfed by her belongings. As I sat on the cold, bare wooden floor, I grazed over the cardboard boxes that filled her room instead. The once quiet space was overcome with the chirping of birds, until it was disturbed by the rustling sound of a photo album book. It was as if the album was calling to me, yearning for me to remember its contents. I picked up the book and gently dusted the cover to reveal a beaming smile of a beautiful girl, my beloved sister, Medium. And as I turned to the first page, I'm overcome with memories. Photo number one. It was the first memory I could ever recall from my childhood. Mariam and I were running around the new apartment that was still in the process of being renovated. And it wasn't until later in life that I found out we moved due to financial issues, but as a four-year-old, I was buried by innocence and optimism to question and comprehend the frowning faces, my mother's tears, and my sister's comforting distractions. Medium took me out of the apartment to the front yard where little yellow dandelions were sprouting through the cracked concrete. She stepped forward to the prettiest one and picked it, then placed it into my hair, tucked securely behind my ear. And after what seemed like hours of flower scouting and picking, we were called by my parents to sit still on the dusty floors near a peeling wall to take a photo and welcome our new reality. The photo? Me, my dad, my mom, Medium and the bundle of vibrant dandelions against the dull background. Photo number two. About four years after moving into our new home, Mediam and I were blessed with a little sister and brother. Given the condition of our home and neighborhood, Mediam would find creative ways to entertain us all, although we only owned two toy dolls, and as her helper, I took on the role of giving her creative ideas to form games from the rubbish, trash bags, and cardboard boxes we collected. However, things took a turn for the worse that one night. Medium fell extremely ill and was rushed to the hospital. She was then diagnosed with brain cancer. After months of chemo and two rounds of surgery, Medium was finally able to come home. To many, she was not the same Medium as they remembered. She was paralyzed on her left side and was not able to communicate or speak, but to me, she looked as beautiful as she always did. And at that moment, I remember carrying on conversations about toys and plants as if she was never gone in the first place. The day she was discharged from the hospital, I went to the front yard and picked the lively dandelions from the cracked concrete grounds, just like she did four years ago. I walked to her with a bundle of flowers in my hands and gently placed the prettiest one behind her ear making sure it was properly secured. Although she could not verbally thank me, she had the biggest and purest smile I had seen since her sickness. And within those moments, I gently embraced her, making sure I was not hurting her or shifting her from her wheelchair uncomfortably. My mom took out her old flip phone and snapped a photo of our moment. The photo, me, Medium, and the vibrant yellow dandelion against a white wall. Photo number three. As the weeks drifted by, I would notice Medium's condition getting worse. The hospital assigned us a home nurse to care for Medium, and because I was the only English speaking individual in my household, I was taught how to use all her medical equipment and learned all the medical terms associated with her condition. My life felt like it came to a breaking point when I noticed my family giving up on her. They would isolate her from my younger siblings. They would feel uncomfortable taking her to public places, and they would often attempt to keep me away from her in fear that she would unconsciously hurt me. I became rebellious against their words and actions because I saw no difference in Medium. All I knew and all I needed to know was that she was my sister and forever would be. It was not until one school night I was with Medium getting ready to go to bed. I thought she looked beautiful as if her face was emulating a bright beaming light highlighting her tan skin and unique features. 
I snuck out of our room and took my mom's phone while she wasn't looking. And in the spare time I had before she would catch me, I snapped a photo of Mediam. The photo? Mediam. Her glowing face. And a pink walled background. Little did I know, that photo would be the last one we captured of her. A few days later, Mediam would pass away quietly in her sleep. Photo number four. The days, weeks, and months following Mediam's passing were a blur. I really don't recall much of my childhood since she's been gone, and I like to think it's a blessing in disguise. I only want my childhood memories to be filled with her. My mom soon after gave birth to a girl, and as I saw her grow, it was as if I was seeing Mediam growing before me. They both share strikingly similar features, from the beautiful curly hair to the big brown eyes and even their smiles. <laughs> Since then, I took on the role my sister Mediam had in caring for my siblings and protecting them the same way Mediam did for us. I found myself emulating her character and her attitude and even pursuing life goals and plans that I know would make her happy and proud. One spring afternoon, I took a stroll through my local forest preserve to look at the new spring blooms until I came across a group of vibrant yellow dandelions growing throughout the green grassland. I began to smile as I got closer to them as they reminded me of my times with Mediam, but before I can act upon my instincts and pick them up, I held myself back. Instead, I just admired them from afar, just like my memories with my beloved sister. I took out my phone and snapped a quick photo to remember the moment. The photo? Bright yellow dandelion flowers in a beautiful green grass field. As I quietly turned and began walking away, I was reminded of a verse from the Holy Quran when Allah says, With every hardship comes ease. Surely, with every hardship comes ease. And indeed, this hardship has slowly been overcome with ease. I would first like to thank the WANT and Circa Printing team for their endless support and encouragement. And a special thanks to my storyteller, Jules. May you forever continue to find joy and happiness. Thank you.